What's up, Closer Nation? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. And today we're going to talk about relentless follow-up. Listen, before we get into relentless follow-up that actually works in converts, so I'm going to give you the keys, right? Like Future and Jay-Z, I'm, I got the keys today. Before we get into that, I want to talk to you about the power of belonging to something bigger than yourself. You know, because here's the deal. We're all in search of like a higher power, whether it be God or whether it be uh, a, a community event, a charity, a cause, your kids. There's always something that like in order for human beings to actually feel enlightenment and fulfillment, we have to believe in something bigger than ourselves. Because if we don't believe there's anything bigger than us, right, as individuals, if we don't believe that there's anything bigger than us, then that's called narcissism, right? And that's a bad spot to be. If you think that you are the be all end all and like your purpose is the main thing here and you support your cause over others, that's narcissism. That's a bad Bad spot to be but I know the type of people that watch these videos that come here every week to whiteboard Wednesday and watch our videos are the type of people that believe in something bigger than themselves like me I'm not a, a Christian I'm not Jewish I'm not Muslim I'm not any kind of religious person but I believe that there's a higher power I believe that there is a divine coder that's what we call them here in the office right that's like our PC term is a divine coder because something scientifically coded this entire planet my existence your existence the, the way the animals, the everything feeds off each other, something, it wasn't an accident, something had to actually code this dimension. And so when I talk about believing in something bigger than yourselves, a cause and a network and a community is something bigger than yourself too. I mean, what if you could find yourself in the middle of people who are earning six figures and seven figures a year and then using that money to bring like awesomeness to the marketplace? What if you could find a group of people who also believed in something bigger than themselves, something bigger than what it is that they're after and believe in the greater good and helping people and you could fall right into that community and receive that help and then give it in exchange? Because here's the thing, for the last nine months, I've been creating a program called Break Free Academy Entourage. We launched it December 15th of 2016, and right now it is September 4th that I'm making this video, I think, 5th, doesn't matter, it's September. <laughs> and so here's the thing, this group has exponentially grown over the last nine months. We've got leaders across different industries, we've got leaders across different marketplaces, and it's people who actually care about each other. The power of this group is unmatched. Never mind the training, never mind how to learn Facebook ads and funnels and sales strategies and follow-ups and all the other stuff that comes apart of this group. But imagine all the people there collectively together using their genius to advance their own agenda, which is for the greater good. That's what I mean by believing in something bigger than yourselves, right? This group particularly just gathered $30,000, a group of less than 600 people gathered $30,000 thousand dollars to help the people down in Houston. Then we've sent 15 members of the group to Houston to help pull people out of the floods, to help deliver water, diapers, baby formula, to go down there and assist the police, the National Guard, the Coast Guard, and everybody else who was involved in that. Because why? Because this group is full of people who think about things bigger than themselves. There's people that literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that dropped everything, grabbed a piece of shit bass boat and an AR-15 and went down to Houston to help deliver the supplies to people that were less fortunate than them. That's the power of this group and the type of people in this group that collectively believe in something bigger than themselves. So I'm asking you, if you're looking to get involved in a cause, a community, and a network that's bigger than yourself that will help you become bigger than you already are, then I'm inviting you to join Break Free Academy Entourage by going to breakfreeacademy.com forward slash entourage, all right? So let's talk about relentless follow-up. One of the number one, not, not one of, let me just take that back and retract that statement. The number one reason salespeople don't make the money they should, the number one reason salespeople don't make the money they should is due to lack of follow-up. Now some people, when I ask them, I say, how's your follow-up game? Oh, dude, I'm, shit, I'm stone cold follow-up on the phone. Number one follow-up, follow-up, they stay. I'm going to follow them around the door, follow them out the sideway, follow them through the alley, follow them through their house, stalk them sometimes out their window. And then I'm like, okay, so what do you do on day three? What you mean, day three? Oh, you follow up with them for more than two days? Oh, man, we got two-day rule around here. You drop them after two days, you got to go on to the next lead, right? Like people don't seriously have a follow-up game. But here's what I do know. It takes eight to 12 Right, I'm trying to put it all together there for you. Eight to 12 times to create familiarity with someone. You see, here's the thing. When you get in front of someone, in order for them to buy from you, they have to know, like, and trust you, right? So first of all, they've got to know who you are. They've got to become familiar with you. Just because they've seen your name once doesn't mean that they know 
who you are. The key to advertising is creating repetition, which creates familiarity, right? So like the more times you see an ad, the more times you see an offer, the more familiar you are with that brand, the more likely you are to make a judgment. Well, the same thing with salesperson. The more that you follow up, the more you're in their ear, the more you're in their inbox, the more you're in their text messages, the more likely they are to take you up on your offer because then they're making the assessment of whether they know you. And once they get to know you because you're in front of them and you're, they're familiar with you, then they can decide where they like and trust you and ultimately buy from you. So today I'm going to talk about the 12-day follow-up. Now at any point if you make the sale, stop following up, right? Because it's just as important what you do after the sale what you do up to the sale. But I'm gonna give you a 12 day cycle that you need to follow relentlessly, but I'm gonna give it to you in a way that'll make it fun, right? Cause the last thing you wanna do is be calling somebody and be like, hey yo, uh, you, you trying to buy some stuff today? I know you weren't trying to buy it yesterday. And you call the next day, he's like, are you avoiding my phone calls? Are you hiding from me? You still want this stuff, right? Like, that's not what I'm talking about, but that's what a lot of people think follow up has to be, like begging for the sale. They say follow-up looks like you're desperate because you keep following up with them. No, we live in a busy world. People are busy as shit these days. People are so busy, they're so distracted, they see over 3,000 advertisements every single day and you think yours is special? Who are you, David Ogilvy? Come on, let's get real here. The thing is, people are distracted, they're not paying attention, they're not focused, and it's your job to keep redirecting their focus and that distraction back in your favor, and that's through follow-up. So the day one, when you get a lead, come in. Right? You get a lead, somebody hands you a referral, you get one in your inbox or whatever. I don't call my leads on the first date. Now I know, don't shoot me down, salespeople. You're like, what? I feel, I feel y'all freaking out. I get it. You're like, why in the world would you not call a lead on day one? Because I'm going to get them to call me. Right? I'm going to get them to call me. That's the whole key. We're playing direct response sales right here. I'm getting them to reach out to me. Sure, they came, they reached out and became a lead. I'm going to follow up with them. But the whole goal is to get them to reach out to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send them a text message. Now, our stuff's set up on autopilot. So as soon as someone becomes a lead on some of our funnels, then they get text messages automatically. So I don't even have to do that. I've done it once. I put it in place and it's done every single time. But what happens is somebody comes in to our ecosystem, then we send them a text first because here's what I do know. 93% of all text messages get read. 99% get viewed. So I know that 93% of all phone calls go unanswered. So I've got 93% red rate on text and 93% unanswered rate on a phone call. Why would I waste my time making a call first? Especially if someone picks up the phone, they pick up the phone just like this. They say, oh, no, that number, fuck him, right? Like that's exactly what happens. And I know that, but if they get a text message from me and all of a sudden it says, hey, this is Ryan with Hardcore Closer. We're glad that you reached out, whatever the, the scenario is. And I'll talk about that in a second. Whatever the scenario I texted to him is, then all of a sudden, they've got a number and a name attached to it. That's one point of familiarity. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to email them, but I'm going to wait about 20 minutes before I email them. They're going to get a text immediately. And this is what's important. On the landing page, wherever you collect leads, ask for the mobile phone number so that you can text them. That's super important. I, I think that you are, that ought to be worth noting. But then I'm going to email them about 20 minutes later. And so what I've done is I know that they're getting my text message and I know that my email has been delivered to their inbox, which email gets about a 20% red rate. So there's still an 80% chance they didn't see my email or open it. Right. And so I know that that's the case, but what I've done in that email and that text message is I've introduced themselves and I've asked them for a response. Hey, this is Ryan with hardcore closer. Thank you for reaching out to it. <laughs> Thank you for reaching out to me. When would be a great time for us to be able to get together and talk about your needs? Right, so what I've done is I've asked them a question, not a statement. I've asked them a question so they have to respond to me because here's the whole thing. If, if you keep giving leads a chance not to respond, then you'll never know if they're reading your shit or not. But once you ask questions, your elicit response, then you draw them in. Then they have no, they can't say that they're ignoring you anymore if they, if they respond to your stuff, right? So day one, we're going to text and email them with ending in a question, eliciting a response. Day two, I'm going to call and follow up. And if they have already responded then I'm, and, they, and they didn't complete the process, I'm going to call them and make sure, hey, in case you need me to walk you through this process, I know you responded yesterday. And I'm going to call them first and offer to walk them through in person. If they didn't respond yesterday, I'm going to call them and say, hey, I sent you a text message and an email. I was wondering what it would take for two of us to get together to talk about how I can solve your problem. When's a good time? Right? Again, I'm trying to elicit a response from them. Same thing, I'm going to send them a text message again saying, hey, just left you a voicemail, but in case you don't check those, here's what I'm looking to do. And I'm going to elicit a response 
Again, day three, I'm going to email them some help, right? Something of value. I'm going to send them an email with an article pertaining to their situation. And uh, I use a software called Snipply. You can go to hardcorecloser.com forward slash Snipply. And uh, you can get the software there. It's free. But what that does, it allows you to send an article from like the Wall Street Journal, the local news or whatever the case, and then put your advertisement on top of it. And so Snipply, hardcorecloser.com forward slash S-N-I-P-L-Y. And what happens is I'm going to send them an article reinforcing the decision that they made to become a lead. So if they're thinking, if, they're, if I'm a real estate agent and they're thinking about purchasing a house from me and I haven't been able to get in touch with them, I'm going to send them an article that talks about how the DFW market's one of the hottest markets in the United States right now. And now is the time to buy before housing prices continue to rise. I'm going to send them something of value on day three. On day four, I'm going to call and email them and I'm going to ask them, did they get that thing of value that I sent them? Hey, just wanted to make sure I sent you an article yesterday. Just want to make sure you got it. I think it's important that you read it and understand it because time is of the essence in this market that we're in. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. But again, I'd like to meet up with you. When is a good time? If we're still looking for that response, then that's what we got to do is we got to consistently ask them questions every time. And number day five, I'm going to give them another gift, right? Maybe I send them a book in the mail, go to Amazon, send them a book in the mail. Hey, if it costs five to $10 to send somebody a book in the mail to get them to respond and you close the $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $10,000 commission deal, do you think it was worth that $10? Do you think it'd be worth the $10 every time? Absolutely it would. So I'm going to send them some sort of gift, right? Maybe a two night vacation stay somewhere where they get pitched a timeshare, <laughs> right? Maybe I'm going to send them, uh, depending on what it is, you know, if I'm trying to get a billion dollars worth of business from a financial advisor, I'm going to send them some peeing golf clubs, right? I'm going to do whatever I've got to do in order to make sure that I'm getting a gift in front of them so that I can get their attention. And day six, I'm going to text and email them again to make sure that they got my gift. And so you can send them a digital gift, you can send them a gift card to Starbucks, whatever the case may be, but day six, I'm gonna follow up, see if they got my gift. Now you might say, okay, well that's six days, you said eight to 12, what happens if you haven't got a hold of them here, then you just simply come back over here and start this process over again. The same thing that I just showed you, you just repeat it until they, uh, in, until they respond. Now here's the thing, if you go 12 days and you haven't heard from them, A, you might have some bad information, B, check last week's Whiteboard Wednesday video on how to track people down on Facebook. And C, make sure that you follow up with them long term. Instead of hitting them every single day, send them out an email once every week, once every 10 days, so that in the given chance in the future they do decide to, to wait back up and respond, you didn't ever stop following up with them. Buy or die, baby. Hey, if you appreciated this and you enjoyed this, make sure you share it on social media with somebody who can use it. If you don't have a lead follow-up system, you're welcome. Now you do. All you got to do is fall into place. Make sure you catch all the replays at hardcorecloser.com. And that's it. I'm out, closers.